Yeah, there's a lot of distractions now for kids. I mean, in my day, there was three TV channels, no computers. You had two choices. You could, I could go and play the drums, or I could go to the park and play soccer with my friends, or ride my bike. That was it. So when I bought a record, or my father bought a new record, you know, it was maybe once every three months. I got some mileage out of those records. It wasn't like, you know, a friend would come round and, I don't know, give me a hard drive with a hundred albums on. How can I digest a hundred albums in one go? Maybe it was luck or a good thing that the things I had to absorb were coming nice and slowly and gave me a chance to really absorb them. You know, I, if my dad went and bought a new jazz album, I might listen to it two or three hundred times before I got the next album. I didn't always love it immediately, but I would start to find things that were interesting. I started to listen more carefully. And when I had enough money to buy a record myself, it was a big choice. It was a lot of money to me. I'd blow all my pocket money on one, one album, and then I'd listen to it for months, you know, and really get something out of it. I can see now, even now with my iPod with 700 albums on, I'm just, sometimes I sit on the plane, I look through and I think, I can't think of anything I want to listen to. I look down all this list, I can't think what I want to listen to. I, I'm just blinded by choice. I'm just absolutely smothered by the amount of choice. It's like with keyboard, you buy a keyboard today, there's like 2,000 sounds on it. You know, if you bought a, a, a Fender Rhodes, back in 1970, it only really had one sound. If you wanted to change the sound, you had to work at changing the sound with pedals and, and effects and reverbs. And the way that you played, you could make different sounds, the, the force that you used on, on the Fender Rhodes. So you were making the sounds. When you buy a synth and it's got 2,000 sounds, you just sit there going through each sound, going, eh, 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 and after about 200 sounds, you just, you just leave it and walk away just bogged down with, with too much choice. And maybe kids have that today with the internet, with the PlayStations, Xbox, I don't know what they're called anymore. You know, all these games, the virtual life stuff you can have on the internet, you know, World of Warcraft, these kind of things. You can have a whole virtual existence all in your bedroom without interacting with anyone. Playing music when I was a kid with friends of my father's or kids from school, you know, I was having social interaction. I go to the park and play cricket with my friends. We were socially interacting. I get worried that kids are just sitting in their room on their own with their headphones on, staring at a TV, uh, you know, a computer monitor, and having some existence that I can't understand. I, I really don't get it. I mean, music was something so precious to me. We would go around, I would go around to a friend's house and we would listen to an album you know, back to back, we listen to the same album like three times, you know, and just sit there with our eyes closed saying, oh, that was amazing. It was, it was a, a night out listening to a, an album. Now it's just something you put on in the background of a fast food restaurant while someone's chewing bubble gum and, and wiping up the floor. It's kind of, it's lost all value. Maybe because of the, the amount of stuff that's available, it, people have just lost the value of it. It's something really precious if you know how to to get something out of music. If you just put it on while you're skateboarding down the road and it's just, you know, it's a shame to me because uh, it's been a whole life for me and I'm sure for you too. It, it's been such a, such a life-changing thing, you know, it's been my whole life listening and playing music.